Howdy folks, Pilgrim here. Um, have patience with me in this one because you're going to hear some information that you have heard before in some of my other videos. But I made those videos before I thought of the idea of, hey, you know, why not put the Genesis timeline on video? So, I set up late last night putting everything in order, going through the timeline with a tooth comb. Some of the lessons we're going to get into gets really deep and there's so much information there I don't even know how I'm going to do it yet. The prophetic alphabetic. So now by the time of this third part you have learned where modern day Israel falls into place in the Genesis timeline and how this signifies that these are very specifically the last days of the generation period of 70 years that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24. My purpose, like I said in lesson two, in this part, in this, in all of this, is in part to show you a picture of the passage from the book of Matthew 24, 32 to 35, that applies here in the last days, which are now. And I have tried to outline a little of the pattern from the timeline taking shape in the last days that gives us a real clear indication of just how close we are to the kingdom of our Lord um, and Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. Okay, so here we go. The Hebrew language created by God is unlike any language in the world. Each letter is comprised of three annotations. A word representation, a symbol representation, and a number, a numeric value. Okay? Instead of saying A, as a name, as the name for the first letter in the English alphabet, you know, the English go A, B, C, but A and B and C doesn't mean anything. Um, the name of each Hebrew letter is an actual word. So the f first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Aleph, and it comes at the head or the beginning of all 22 letters. 22 is a sacred number in Judaism, by the way. Um, it comes at the head or the beginning of all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So, 22 in, from a Judaistic perspective, is made, of, is made up of 1 plus 3 times 7. Okay? It's a sacred number in Judaism. We, we went into a little bit of that in Lesson 2. We'll be going into it more in, in the future lessons. So, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. Its word representation is master. Its symbol is the ox and its number is one, okay? And therefore, it represents God. One, the number one in Judaism represents God's sovereignty. So its word is the master, its symbol is the ox, and its number is one, everything in threes. Perhaps this might give you a clue as to why Satan incited the people of Israel in the desert to build a golden calf when he led Israel astray. Um, those, you know, the meaning is clear. Satan opposes God's worship. But anyway, I'm getting off track. I'm just, I just find that interesting that it was a calf, an ox, that they built uh, as a symbol of idolatry in the desert when they were in the desert for 40 years. There is very, very deep significance to the numerical value of each letter in Hebrew, as you will find out. But Remember these understandings, please, when you consider the following articles, the following lessons, for you will see how they apply during the next couple of days. Now, instead of doing all of the stuff all over again that I did in the previous videos, I'm going to ask you a favor, and I'm going to put the links below this video, just below the screen, here on YouTube. Okay? Please, please watch these videos in conjunction with this one, as they lay the foundation of Gematria, which in these lessons are going to prove to be very, very important uh, for your understanding of the things that will follow. Uh, the first one is called Intro to Geometria. It's only three minutes long. Please watch that video. And the second one is called Geometria, Judgment and Mercy in God's Word. And that's only six minutes long. Please take a look at these two videos. They are everything that I could give you in this video for lesson three of the Genesis timeline, okay? Thank you, God bless, and I'll see you in the next lesson.
it gets better. Howdy folks, Pilgrim here. Um, welcome to the Genesis timeline, which I have called Gematria and the Lord. It may be a bit gloomy in here, I'm hoping it comes out brighter on the camera. Gematria is but one of the methods used for studying the scriptures. It's a rabbinical study. It is but one of the sod, as they're called in Hebrew, one of the sod or secret ways of study. Those who have experienced it have been rewarded with a greater understanding of God's word, as some of you have already seen uh, via the prophecies for the last days in the previous lessons. It may appear as a useless endeavor to some, but when we look closely at the relationships between words with the same, uh, with the same numerical totals, we discover something quite interesting. For example, the Hebrew its numerical value, the Hebrew for, for a child, Yaled, for example, is 44. The word for Abba is 3. And the word for mother in Hebrew is M, which uh, its numerical value is 41. So, the product of the father and the mother is the child. And it is more than coincidence that when we see that when we add the number of the father with the number of the mother that we have the product for the child. Um, 3 plus 41 equals 44. Mama and Dada make Baba, if you like, okay? But this is the way Hebrew works. This is it. There are three patriarchs in the descent of the Jewish people. They are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are four matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. This is one of the first this is one of the first things a child has to learn in Judaism today. Now, please note that 3 plus 4 equals 7. Okay? This too is no accident. This is the way Hebrew actually works. Okay? Now, the Hebrew name for Israel, Yisrael, bears within it the acronym for these seven people. Yod, Shin, Resh, Aleph, and Lamed. When we total, when we total um, all of the Hebrew letters in each of the names here, we have 26 letters. This is the same number as the holy name that is not pronounced by the Hebrews. It is most often translated Lord. Some of you know what I mean when I say yod he vav he Okay? The same number. Let me put that on screen too. So we see the total letters, the total letters in the names of the people who make up the beginnings of Israel are 26. And the name of the Holy One is also numerically 26. It is the descents of these seven people that were given, it is the descendants of these seven people that are given seven feasts that they must keep unto the Lord. Three of those seven are males. You'll notice that, you know. Okay. And we see that of the seven feasts, three were to be kept by all males who would appear before the Lord in Jerusalem on the appointed day. We also see these two numbers, seven and three, many times when speaking of the children of Israel. Okay? Now, seven and three make ten. And you'll know why I said that in a minute. What I want to do is give you a numbers guide. Here we go. Here's a very basic, quick numbers guide. 1. God's sovereignty. 3. Emphasis in purpose, divinity, divine intentions. 4. Universality. The four directions, you know, like when God says he'll bring his people back from the four corners of the earth, he means he'll bring them back from everywhere. But it's also the number of the supernatural realm. If that's important. We might cover that later. I'll see. 5. The number of grace. 6. The number of imperfection, man. 7. Perfection. 
Why is that made? Why is that the number of perfection? God's relationship with man. Man, God, God, man, rather. Six plus one equals seven. Man, in relationship with God, true relationship with God, sinless, which is only through Jesus Christ, is in a state of perfection. Eight is the number of covenant. It's the number of Jesus Christ. We'll, we'll cover that later in a, some very, very fantastic detail, and you'll be amazed. Ten, now remember this, ten is the number of earthly existence. Things complete on, in the earthly realm. Twelve, the, the number of God's government, divine rulership. Forty is also completion. Okay? But it's in the supernatural realm. It's also the number of death. And 50 is the number of jubilee, release from captivity. It is interesting to me that Jesus is the 60th generation from Adam. Why, why 60? Why not 70? Because the number 10 denotes things complete on the earthly realm, yeah, on earth. Uh, we're going to go through that in just one second. But 50, the number of jubilee, released from captivity, plus 10, equals 60. When Jesus died on the cross, he cried, it is done. On the earthly realm, he had released all of us from captivity to sin and death. He cried, it is done. The number 10 denoting completeness on the earthly realm. There is not, well, I'm repeating that because I'm trying to emphasize that there is nothing further for us to do. We cannot add to the Lord's work as if the Lord's work were incomplete. So those who have a works-based faith are making a huge mistake because Jesus did it all. Even the numbers that scripture was written in, even the gematria shows you this and bears witness to you very clearly. Jesus' work completed it all. We can do nothing and we deserve nothing. Now, let's carry on. 50 plus 10. It's also interesting that the book of Revelation deals... Um, the book of Revelation was written 60 years after Jesus' death. And the book of Revelation is made up of 22 chapters, of which there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, each letter having three annotations. That's 66 annotations, and there are 66, in the, uh, 66 books in the Bible, which is called the Word, because letters make up words, the Word of God. I'm just throwing all this stuff together because I find it poetic and I find it beautiful. Okay? Now, Let's get on to one more thing. <sighs> who was, who is, and who is to come. You recognize these words? You should. They're from Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. The name in the scriptures to describe the Holy One is yod he vav he This name, too, can be divided into three Hebrew words. Notice how God does almost everything in threes. Yeah? Or so many things, anyway. When we know this, that this name can be divided into three words, when we know this, we understand better the quote in the book of Revelation that says, which was, and which is, and is to come. Revelation 1.4 Chaya means was. Chove means is. Yechie means will be. To see that we have a second witness to this statement, we hear the words of the angel. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which was, uh, which are, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. Revelation 16, verse 5. It should be noted that we have here exactly three words used. That these three words, you know, number three on that chart over there that I showed you, okay? Divine intention. Divinity. However you want to phrase it. It should be noted that we have here exactly three words used. That these three words total exactly ten letters. As was, is, is to come. 
make a complete thought in the sense of tenths. So does the number 10 in that it completes these digits numerically. It is the number of the Ten Commandments. It is the last number that Abraham used in asking God not to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah if but ten righteous men were found. A, a minyan of ten Jewish men is still used in Judaism, even to this day, you know, for prayer. It is the number that Jacob used in stating a case against Laban and the changing ten times of his wages. Actually, if you go into the Hebrew and read the Kumash, you'll find that Laban changed his wage one hundred times. But that is still ten times ten. More, you know, co totally complete. It is the number of curtains in the tabernacle. The boards were to be of ten cubits. The pillars, ten, and their sockets were ten. In prophecy we are told that ten women will bake their bread in one oven. That ten men will take hold of the skirt of the Jew, saying to him, We will go with you. That's in Zechariah 8.23. When we look, we see that many times the number ten is used, and it is used to describe things earthly and something that is complete for bad or for good. So now we're starting to get into the into the meat of it. You're starting to have a, an understanding of how numbers are used in the geometria of the scriptures that God wrote and how he chose to phrase himself and what messages he was sending through this deep study. Um, what messages he was sending to us. And those who question the value of these messages, we'll go into that too later, and I shall prove what I'm saying, because scripture backs me up in it. Alright, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.